Hello, everyone, and happy New Year's Eve. I am psychic medium Jamie. Spirit Walker Nicole. We are Shades of Spirit. We are so excited to be able to bring a topic to the forefront of 2020, right? So we are finishing off strong here. Some of you across the world have already celebrated New Year's Eve, so happy New Year to you as well. 2020 definitely was a doozy, right? It gave us a lot of challenges. It gave us a lot of obstacles. Uh, it's still giving a lot of us a pain in our side. But at the same time, I don't want us going out in that vibration because so much good came of 2020 as well. So much of it was shadowed by what was going on across the world. It wasn't just in each of our own states or each of our own countries. This was a worldwide epidemic that hit. That pandemic affected millions upon millions of people. And then you throw in all of our own type of stuff in our country. You got the politics going on and, oh my gosh, just life in general and trying to survive. I mean, that's really where we're at now. And that anxiety, trepidation, that fear that we've had continues to still loom. But I don't want you going into 2020 with that energy. And if you are somewhere else where you have celebrated the new year and you're tuning in, welcome. And now start on this high vibration. And remember that we are a human race who has had to go through so many different hoops just to get to the next day. And there are those of us who actually really thrived in this type of environment as well. We took it to heart. We allowed ourselves to be in that moment to kind of move forward and do a lot of introspection. I read a great post today on Instagram from uh, actually a friend of mine. And I didn't realize the hurt and the sadness and the sorrow that she was going on within her own, you know, physical body, emotional body, um, turning to, you know, alcohol as kind of a crutch and realizing that that wasn't working and taking herself back and being raw within herself and going deep down and finding what she honored within herself, reminding herself the beautifulness within her. And so she had this powerful statement on Instagram. And so I'm not going to shout out your name because I didn't get your permission, but I just want to say that that really touched me. And thank you for sharing your story because it's about empowerment at the end of the day, which is why we're doing the show today. Yeah, I'm excited because like 2021 is the, the year that we are going to kick this pandemic's butt and finally get back to normal. Like it's, you can feel it. You can see it. Um, however you feel about the vaccine thing, that's not what we're going to talk about today, but like changes are happening, positive changes, and it should be excited. I am. I so <laughs> do you want to introduce our first person and tell everybody what we're doing with these lovely beings that are on our, our show today? So uh, today's show is going to be um, a thank you show, you know, instead of going out. And I know a lot of people are like, let's get rid of 2020 and all that. And you, yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. But we're going to say thank you today. We're, we're going to show some gratitude to um, certain groups of people that have really shown themselves, shown their true colors this year and um, sort of embraced that spirit mm -hmm. that um, is not often seen. And we really got to see some of these heroes come come into the light this year. Yep. Our, is, we're doing rich first. We're doing rich, you know, and everybody who we have on, the people that they're going to be thanking um, all have personal experiences in that as well and have been and are everyday heroes within our lives mm -hmm. and within the lives of others. Yeah, absolutely. So Rich was specifically chosen. Uh, <laughs> Rich is going to come on and, and he's got a few things to say that he'd like to um, <clears throat> kind of put out there to the people as a thank you to our first responders. Hello, everyone. Rich Narich here. Um, uh, just, just to get started here, uh, I was a police officer for 30 years in the city of San Diego. Uh, and I just want to make a shout out and a thank you to all the first responders that are out there. Uh, you, you people uh, are standing in the gap. You're answering those radio calls. You're helping the people out. Uh, this is a trying time uh, at this time of year, normally, especially for uh, our line of work. And uh, to throw in the pandemic on top of all that, plus uh, all the other uh, problems we were having uh, in the past few months, it just piles on and it makes it, it could be a challenge 
to be a first responder during this period, this time. Uh, I would just say, you know, maybe if you have a second, take a breath and, and just kind of sit back and uh, take your, your mind off your personal problems that you may be having and actually uh, go out and help someone. Take, take your mind off yourself and go help that victim. Maybe, you know, spend a little extra time with that victim that you normally would. Uh, and, and I think that will make all the uh, difference in the world for you. Uh, it will definitely help you out. Now, Rich, you also have a special connection to the uh, firefighters of the world. Do you want to talk a little bit about them? Yes. My, uh, my son just got off probation. He's working for the uh, Los Angeles Fire Department, and uh, we're very proud of him. He's actually working today, as a matter of fact. When you, I know he um, <clears throat> recently, did he recently graduate or he just got off probation? What did you say? Uh, he recently got off probation. How did it feel for you when you first saw him and all of his firefighting gear and uh, ready to go out there? Were you scared? Were you proud? Was it a combination? Uh, I wasn't scared. I, I knew he was getting trained properly. Uh, this is something he wanted to do. Uh, I wasn't going to be a dream stealer and try to try to steer him away from that line of work. Uh, it's very dangerous, but it's uh, very rewarding at the same time. And I'm just so proud of him. He, it, this was his, his uh, dream job. And he had to go through a lot of hoops to get to that position where he'd get into the academy. And uh, I'm just so proud of him that he, he stuck it out. Is there any rivalry that goes on, on during the holidays with the, the police and the firefighters? <laughs> I, I don't think during the holidays, no, because you're, you're constantly out there working the calls together and uh, you just don't have time for that rivalry. It usually shows up when everything kind of settles down. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you know what? Thank you for what you've done. You know, this is in your family and this is something that you guys, you know, take those oaths and you stand in that space and you're there to help people and you're there to support them. And, you know, it has been trying this year to say the least. And for, you know, for everything that you do do, um, we appreciate it. And so, you know, we, we love that you come on and you're willing to share your story and kind of give some advice out there to, you know, to everyone that you've worked with that are still working. Um, you've got to retire now and you have that bank of knowledge and that support and you're finding other groups to help as well. Those volunteer groups that are out there that you help. And that's just amazing to continue that process and the give back in it. Um, so before you go, can you kind of talk about your transition? Because I think people would definitely find that interesting. 30 years as an officer in San Diego. And now what does that transition look like for you? Uh, it was tough. I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was tough. And I'd say uh, if, if you need help, get help. You know, there's no shame in getting help. It really isn't. Uh, and then uh, working with you and Nicole, uh, it really helped me to, to, to transition past that, that, that former life. I call it a former life now because I've been retired six and a half years now. So uh, I, didn't, I didn't let all that negative uh, stay attached to me. I was able to work that out and then, again, go out and try to help someone else now transition or move, move through what they're going through. So I've always been a helper, you know, wanting to help people. And uh, it just, it was just a natural trend. Uh, it was a natural flow just to flow into something different. I love it. And now you're, you're working on your healing abilities and what you can give back on that side Definitely. of it, you know, congratulations. Rich was one of our first groups to go through our Reiki certification. And he, I know I said it wrong. Just shut, shut up over here. Just <laughs> shut up. Okay. Um, he was certificated, nope. uh, but he is a Reiki master now along with LaShawn, who will be on at the end of the show and uh, Nicole as well. So, you know, you've taken all of what you've done and now you're going to be moving forward in healing and working with others and their energy and connecting on a completely different level. And it's just amazing to see that because you can help 
those that were in your field that are, you know, going through that trauma and some of those things that they, they need healing with as well. And just being able to connect that community and show that it's more than just, you know, black or white, that there's this gray area and there's help and support for them in so many different ways is amazing. Um, both on spirit side, along with the humans that we work with as well. So congratulations to you on that. Um, I'm gonna pull one quick card because I think we're gonna go to break here in just a second because it's also cards today. So I'm gonna pull a card for Tanya. You're gonna get the Moonology deck. And uh, we want you guys just to be, this is interactive, you know, it's, it's, it's allowing ourselves to, to just finish off this new year and go with it. I know, look, Nicole's already got the, the thing out here. All right, here we go. This one. What is it, Nicole? It is your commitment is being tested. Ah, okay, Tanya. So with that, we want you to make sure that everything that you are looking for to come up for 2021 is exactly what you're in alignment with. And if you're feeling that trepidation in any type of um, relationships you're having, or if it's about moving forward with something for work, what, what you're doing, um, it, it is a little bit of a trying time. And they're talking to me about step back, step back, step back, probably take about 16 steps backwards and start being the observer. It seems to be a theme for a lot of us right now is to be the observer in where you're standing because you don't need this extra stress. That's a big thing for you. If they're not on board with you, then you know what? Your vibration's up here and they're down here and that's okay. Let them kind of fall off on their own. And if they want to rejoin you at some point, then allow them to rejoin you. But you do not need to be tested. Um, One of my favorite lines out of this card um, in the book, it says, what you believe to be true for you, what you believe to be true is true for you. So believe in yourself. I love it. Yep. I love it. And we will leave you with that. Happy New Year, Tanya. Thank you so much, Rich. We are going to go to break. And when we come back, we will be speaking with Donna. So we'll see you after these messages. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Shades of Spirit. I'm psychic medium, Jamie. Spirit Walker, Nicole. And today we are honoring and hearing the stories of some of our essential workers that are working day in and day out to make sure that we continue to thrive in what has been for a lot of people a Debbie Downer year. I mean, you know, like I, the worst year ever. I feel like it's Saturday Night Live and you hear wah, wah, you know, but for a lot of us, um, it has been a time of being able to go within and, and kind of move forward and make plans for, you know, whenever this all decides to lift, but we're, we're working towards that. But some of you have to still work every day, right? Um, and you have to work through a lot of just trials and tribulations and learning new things and being able to kind of just help that younger generation on um, being able to move forward. And I love that Donna is not only a school teacher going through this, but she also has a child going through this as well. So you've got the double whammy going on there. I can't imagine what it's like for you guys on the other side. And I mean, besides you, we've got a couple other friends that are teachers. And then as a mother, having to also navigate your son's schooling at the same time and you know, being present for that, some of us aren't, aren't able to stay home like yourself. You're teaching while he's going to school. Um, we're not able to do that. I know that my daughter is a senior this year. She's been tutoring two students that are in elementary school because they're having a tough time because English is their second language. Uh, for one of the little girls that she does, she's in second grade. Her mom doesn't speak English at all. So Abby's over there typing emails in Spanish, which hallelujah for four years of Spanish folks, but that's very hard. I mean, it's just the everyday of trying to turn the computer on, let alone get into a zoom meeting. I don't know how many times I've been pulled away from my son because the zoom internet went out. I mean, all these things, and yet you're sending out Christmas cards to your students and you're checking in on them. And it's just all of these things that you guys can do. I have a friend whose husband is a teacher and on Christmas Eve, he was calling every single one of his students to check in on them. You guys are going above and beyond what you normally do in the classroom as well. So kind of tell us how this has affected you, how you've been able to empower your students, your son, yourself, and just work through this the best that you can. Well, I think what's been really hard for me, it's like you're saying, like, sometimes you get bumped off of Zoom and that's been really tough. It's like, you know, like 
just the technology piece. I mean, there's been days when, you know, you have all these kids and all these teachers working from Zoom from home. And there's been times when we try to put two adults on at a time, because if one of the adults gets dropped off the meeting, it's like at least somebody can take over. And then there's times when we're dealing with kids that don't have internet access, that their internet is spotty, um, just a lot of different things. There's times where you know, you might have a family with like five siblings, like from elementary school all the way up to high school, and they're all trying to learn at the same time and sometimes within like the same room. And it's just been really difficult. Um, I know for a lot of my teacher friends, we all feel so powerless. Like we've all discussed it this year. Like we feel so powerless because I'm very kinesthetic. I'm a lot like my students. So it's like, for me, it's like the big thing was the personal interaction with my kids. You know, sometimes my kids just really needed a hug or they just needed somebody to sit with them during lunchtime. Um, and I can say this has been the most challenging of the whole 20 years that I've been teaching the absolute most challenging year I mean, I'd say even more so than my first year of teaching. Um, it's just been extremely difficult. Um, you know, like you mentioned, I sent out Christmas cards to my students and then um, I wasn't expecting any responses from them, but they have, I set up a Google, um, a voicemail so that, that their messages go, they don't have my personal phone number, but it goes from Google Voice to my personal phone number. So I get all their messages. I get the stuff in the middle of the night and people are like, really, are you crazy? You gave them your personal number? But I'm like, I know it's hard. I mean, those of you guys that know me, it's just when you've done this for so long and as like a mama bear and as a grandmother, I just really feel for these kids. It's just extremely tough. But to get those responses from those kids or they'll send me a picture, they'll text me a picture of them holding the card and like nobody's ever sent me a card. I was crying, but I just knew how much that meant to them. And just that's the best I could do because I couldn't go over to their house and give them a hug and we're not supposed to hand deliver stuff, you know, because, well, COVID. So it's like we couldn't deliver <laughs> stuff to their home. So I did the best that I could. But it's just been really hard on a lot of my students. They've been really emotional. Um, Your students, though, aren't regular students either. You're a middle school teacher. I'm a middle school teacher, um, but I'm also a spe special education teacher. Um, most of my students have um, learning disabilities or they have ADHD. I do have some students in wheelchairs. I do have some kids with, oh, Miss Lisa, don't make me cry. <laughs> Um, you know, with physical disabilities, but most of my students, um, I, I deal with a lot of homeless kids. I deal with a lot of foster kids. So that layer on top of everything else has been really, really tough. Not being able to go do the home visits, which we normally could um, during the school year when we're in person, I can't do those. Um, the district is not allowing me to do them. Um, it, it's just, it's extremely hard. And Just I know really when hard. we talked at the beginning of the pandemic, you were like, some of these kids aren't going to eat. Like it wasn't just the school aspect or yeah. how are they going to get a computer? It goes down to some of these low income families. And I worked for a food and nutrition department as an area supervisor for Powell Unified. So I understand like the rush for everyone to kind of gather, how are we going to feed these kids? Well, you know what? They're still offering it through all school districts, mm -hmm. but what if you don't have a parent because they're working two jobs to make ends meet to be able to get you to pick up that food? So it, it I mean, it goes far beyond just the learning part of it. It goes with their well being and, you know, what is going on at home. There are a lot of things that we don't know behind the scenes. Even as teachers, mm -hmm. you guys have inklings and you guys get to spend the time with them and they, they get to get away from that environment. They get to have breakfast and lunch. Mm -hmm. And that part kills me almost the most is because we will make up the learning as time goes on. But for those kids that rely on just like food and connection and to have that conversation in the morning with their lunch lady because their mom was too busy because she had to get to that job um, and got taken by the neighbor, you know, to school and to be able to have that connection with the, with the yard duty and with her, their teacher and, you know, maybe the office staff, just depending on what it is, you know, all of you have done so much. And I think what gets me too is 
is that we acknowledge the teachers and we acknowledge what you guys are doing and how you're going about it. We don't understand how hard it is for you, but there's also the custodians, the office staff, people that have been you know, laid off or on furloughs now that don't get to interact with the kids as well. My son especially really had a great connection with the office staff. Now, unfortunately, it's because sometimes grandpa forgot to, um, <laughs> to pick him up. He didn't realize it was his day. And so it, it got to a point where it was kind of a joke. And so like, my, my son would go in and they're like, just get the phone, Jake. You could just, so he'd be over there like, mom, grandpa forgot again. But at the end of the year of fourth grade, not knowing in fifth grade, I wasn't going to get there. And then when I got to take all his books back in fifth grade, I went over and personally thanked each one of those staff members in that office because the nurse who helped him out when he was, you know, just having a, a day and would sit with him and allow him just to sit in there for the day and eat his lunch to, yeah, the office tech, the principal's assistant, the principal, all of them knew him and called him by name and respected him and taught him valuable lessons that there it's a safe place to be at. Like all of you, the custodians, like they just, he was doing crossing guard and all this stuff. They all interact with our kids and we forget how many hands touch and raise those kids when they're at school. So what would be a message, a thank you type of message that you can give out as a mother and as a teacher to this particular group of essential workers? For everybody who works in education, just like you're mentioning, down to the lunch lady, down to mm -hmm. the paraeducators, the yard duties, I mean, the volunteers that come in on their own time. I mean, it's huge. You have an impact on these kids that you do not know. And just thank you for all you're doing. I know it's hard. I talk to my paraeducators. I talk to my fellow teachers. And yeah, there's a lot of crying going on behind the scenes because they feel so helpless. Um, but you guys, thank you for all that you do. The custodians, like you're saying, the custodians that knew the kids' names, that said good morning to them, the people in the office, the attendance lady for the kid that always showed up late, but you know, the attendance lady who was always there for that kid. Um, just thank you. It's hard. And you know, for the parents out there, I know for me, it's been rough. Um, really look out for your kids. Like you're saying, the learning will get caught up eventually, but just the kids' mental, mental health and emotional health is really huge right now. Um, kids are really struggling. Kids are hurting. And just to be there for them because school staff, we can't always be there for them. Um, so just for all the parents, the grandparents, the aunties and uncles, just look out for these kids. It's huge. And they really need us right now. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your story with us, Donna. Uh, we appreciate you and all the essential workers in education. Um, we, you know, we're honoring our, our essential workers in police and fire as well. Right now, we're going to take a break. When we come back, who do you have a card for? Um, I have I Mary, don't, Mary Ann Benson. Mary Ann Benson got I've, the card ready. I've got Grisilda as well. So when we come back, we'll do Mary Ann's card and then we're going to bring on Lisa. And now we've already made her cry with Donna's story. So I'm sure this will be a piece of cake for you. Um, honoring essential workers in those skilled nursing facilities as well. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll see you after these messages. I love the music today. Yeah. Benny, this is great. Like it's so like relaxing and calming and I just, it's a good vibe. Okay, welcome back, you guys. I'm Psychic Medium Jamie. Spirit Walker Nicole. You're watching Shades of Spirit today. We're going to jump right into this. We want to get Marianne's reading done, and then we're going to introduce Lisa. So have at it, Spirit Walker Nicole. So Marianne got the Angel of Clairvoyance card, which is talking about your third eye opening. Be observant of the signs and visions you receive. So the spirit team's talking about you're, you're going to start getting, if you don't already, or if you already are, then it's going to be happening even more. Those signs, those things, clairvoyance, it means clear seeing. Uh, Jamie and I teach a class um, all about different psychic senses and you have different clairs. Clairvoyance is about that clear vision, clear seeing. And some people don't really think about the fact that when you see those signs, those 1111 or the 1234, which is one, two, three, four, whatever it is, the angel symbols, signs, whatever resonates with you, that is a form of clairvoyance. When you start noticing that, it's like you're flexing your clairvoyance muscle. And that is a really good way to, to work on that all the time is looking for the signs, seeing the, you know, I don't know, angel bumper sticker and being aware of that, hearing whatever it is, however you connect with it. So be aware that's coming for you, Marianne. And if you already are, it's going to be coming a lot more. So keep noticing them, maybe even write a journal. 
um, and put those put those things that you're seeing in there because that has power when you start and then you can start really documenting it and looking through the days and oh yeah and then you just start noticing how much it's happening because day to day it's so easy to kind of oh yeah that's weird that's a coincidence but when you start documenting it and writing it down you're like that's way too many to be a coincidence (laughs) so clairvoyance is uh probably your strongest clair and it is going to be coming in hot for you coming in hot i like it why don't you introduce our next guest (sighs) this is our lisa (laughs) Our Lisa. And, and, you know, and I I was trying to think of like a fancy way to introduce her. And the thing is, she's just like our friend. She's our our very good friend. And she's a go-to, you know, when, I don't know, like she's the, she's the one, like when you're not feeling great or just things aren't going, like a text from her can like really turn things around and reaching out to her, even just having a cup of coffee with her, whatever it is, uh, can make a difference. She's just that person. And I think a lot of you listening can, when you think about who's my, that person for us, this is Lisa. I've known Lisa for a very long time, folks. So it's an honor to have her on and her support and love for not only me as a person, but now what we're doing. Um, I actually watched both of her sons when they were babies. So I'm not trying to date myself or anything, but we go way back. She actually, I met her because she lived next door to my parents. And so kind of grew up in that neighborhood and just continued that connection. And then when I really started coming into my gifts, she was right there as well. Like, Hey, come on, let's do this together. So first of all, thank you for your support and just, you know, your friendship over all these years and the caring that you have for our families and everyone around us. But you've had to make some transitions and adjustments in your own life this year as well, which puts us to the next group of essential workers that we're going to talk about today, the the nursing homes, the hospice workers, the the skilled nursing facilities um, that, that are taking care of our loved ones, sometimes to the point where we can't even go see them physically. And how much more weight does that put on their shoulders to have to kind of make up for that contact and those relationships? So why don't you give us a little story about where you're at right now and what's been going on? Well, thank you ladies for the intro. I wasn't going to cry, but that (laughs) intro made me cry. Sheesh. So I'm a cry baby. I'm a July birth child and we cry easy. So anyway, yes. So I've had my fair share of getting to know nursing homes and the care workers for that. Um, We placed my mom on hospice this year and um, she's with Sharp Hospice since May. And uh, as you guys know, COVID was like in its like main house lockdown and everything, but those nurses and those aides, like they still went house to house. Like the aides still came twice a week to bathe her. The nurse still came. Um, And they, they came out to the, and they still do go out to the homes and they have to trust that the people haven't been near COVID, that they don't have any symptoms. So they have to like trust the honor system and come out into homes. And so they're literally putting themselves in, you know, which could be harm's way. And like the, like gratitude and appreciation here I go. It's really hard to say, you know, thank you for going the extra mile knowing that it's not safe for you. And so since um, we've put my mom in a hospice home um, because she's in her late stage of transitioning to uh, spirit and it's, it's the same thing. Luckily in a hospice home, you can visit them. And so we get to see her any day of the week, anytime we wanna go um, for as long as we wanna stay. But still those workers are around the clock Um, They're dedicating their time to helping people and, you know, you can't thank them enough because, you know, once your loved one who is, you know, terminally ill isn't at your home anymore, you have to rely on strangers to take care of them. And so like you, you can't say thank you enough for everything you do and caring for other people's families. Absolutely. And that's the biggest part. And then you (laughs) you cried. We knew you were going to cry. But no, I mean, that really is, you know, the bottom line is that there are still nurses and like you said, aides that are still going to homes. There still has to be care given. We can't just all lock down and hide like lives have to continue evolving. And they are coming in knowing that they might end up getting sick. And yet they still show up to your door. Mm -hmm. They still come on in now, obviously protected and masked and all that for Mm -hmm. both sides. But sometimes what we forget is that they have to go home to their families. 
just like first responders, right? They're out there in the middle of it. And, you know, doctors and nurses and all of you that are on these front lines working with the public, then to have to go home and, you know, undress in the garage and put your clothes directly in the laundry, get right into the shower, right? Keep your distance sometimes from your family. Some of you haven't hugged your own children since March. Mm -hmm. And we forget sometimes how that affects the person who is walking into your home to still do their, their job, to still honor the healthcare industry, to still be that person that's taking care of our loved ones as well. And for you to be able to go and see her is a gift because there are so many places to where you can't and you see the, the pictures and we have people we know and it is, it's like through a glass, right? At least they can have that contact, but some of them can't have contact at all. I think what killed me was on Facebook. It was an older couple who were in different wards of a convalescent home. And finally they were allowed to see each other and they'd been married like 70 years and just the emotion that erupted Mm -hmm. to, to touch one another again we take sometimes that for granted and just, you know, acknowledging you guys and allowing a, you know, allow this to come through, allow this love and light to come to you as well, because that's what we're doing is we're raising our vibration and we're honoring all of you today. So Lisa, thank you so much for sharing that. We told you you were going to cry. Um, (laughs) I'm going to pull a card. I already actually did it break for Gersilda Fernandez and see, you want to do Monica Sanchez? Yep. Perfect. Um, And then I've got Brianna, Nunez, you guys will get cards uh, before the end of the show. Uh, the Enchanted Forest is what I got for you, Gersilda. And I love this deck. It's out of the Gaia Oracle deck. And we're right now finishing off a full moon, right? It's about the connection with earth along with sky. It talks about mystery, magic, and excitement. Um, and it talks about one minute life seems rather mundane and boring, which a lot of us are kind of going through right now. It's kind of like Groundhog Day over and over Mm -hmm. and over again. Then all of a sudden someone or something sweeps into your world like a breath of fresh air. All of a sudden you feel as though you are on a magical mystery tour with a renewed sense of passion, excitement for life. Take that passion, that excitement, that magical mystery tour, listen to the song because it's a really cool song as well, and allow yourself to just start floating. They're showing me that floating part of it, that elevation part of it for you, moving into this new element um, as well. It's exciting for you. And I know that you also are in the healthcare industry as well with what you do. So I want to personally thank you because I'm sure you're still seeing clients and patients as well and still helping them. Maybe it's through Zoom. Maybe it's not the direct contact. You know, I'm not quite sure. We haven't talked in a little bit, but you help others on this mission and just giving them that hope every day. And now it's coming back to you. It's coming full circle is what they're showing. It also is talking about life is full of romance now. Woohoo! I love it. Continue embracing that love for your family, yourself. That's the biggest part. And then that connection to continue growing with your spirit team is right where they want you to be. And I'm going to leave you with that. We got a couple minutes before we go to break. You want to do Monica's? Monica's is very straightforward. It is the <laughs> angel of release. So this is the time. If you look at the card, you'll see a woman uh, holding a bunch of balloons with different things, words written on them, releasing those balloons with an angel waiting up above. And, and that's what it's all about. Tonight is a perfect night to do that. Um, Take advantage of this transition from 2020 to 2021. Um, Write it, think it, however you want to do it. Take all that energy that is not serving you anymore and get rid of it and just make some room for that new 2021 energy. Um, Yeah, I mean, and that's just release. release. Let it go. Let those balloons go. Let them fly. Um, Before we go to break, I want to do a shout out to all of you that are in hospitality, restaurants, bars, movie theaters, small businesses. Uh, My background is 25 years of restaurant management. I understand how hard it is for all of you from the busser to management to the owners. Um, I have a friend, a dear friend who I grew up with who owns many locations in San Diego and the weight it is on her to be able to feed her, her, for her families, the families that work for her, for them to be able to eat and to be able to survive is really weighing on her. And just, you know, we're doing what we can, but for you guys out there, it is a tough time and we support you. We love all of you. We know how hard you work when you're in those jobs and, and what labor intensive jobs they are. And some of you will work two or three of them in a day just to survive. 
and or to go to school like some of you are, are servers and bartenders and you're working to go to college and a lot of this is being held up and so i want to acknowledge you as well um, as those essential workers out there and small business owners we're still trying to send you love and light for you guys to hold on to your own livelihood after we come back from this break we're going to have Lashawn on as our last guest today uh, speaking on behalf of herself and working with doctors and nurses this year so we will be right back after these messages Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I am psychic medium Jamie. And Spirit Walker Nicole. Are you sure? I am. All right. We are Shades of Spirit. We are giving out some shout outs to our essential workers today. And we're raising our vibration. We're all sharing in this love and light energy so that we can move into 2021 on a brand new vibration, ready to go, right? It is a big deal. We're switching into a new year. Let's really embrace that and embrace that change that's going to come with it. Positive change, thinking positively. So Brianna, your card real quick is the contribution card, oh, contribution. I can't talk today. There we go. I should have just let you do this What'd one. What'd you say? I know. I just leave me contribution, alone. Contribution. Yeah. It says, let us celebrate life in this one eternal moment as two souls full of infinite love. You are now bestowed with infinite grace and blessings. Go forth and lavish the world with their joys and their wonder. It says, gift your time, wisdom, or influence to a project. It's all about your energy and where it's at right now and gifting that out and doing it in an environment to where you can get that back as well. That's very important is having that reciprocation and allowing yourself just to feel like, like Monica's card with the balloons, like you're going up into the sky and you've got this energy flowing with you, but they want you to bring it into that mind, body, and soul for you. And then to put it back out for others, to be able to harness that with you as well. And you're traveling on a journey with others and they they're talking about, this is a good match as well. And I'm going to leave you with that so that we can get to LaShawn. And then we have our closing remarks for 2020 as well. So LaShawn, you've got the task of doctors and nurses. I'm just going to let you go. Everyone, this is LaShawn with Luminous Path with Love. She's the one that makes us all these bracelets as well, right? And so talk about why, why we're doing that for you. Top of the morning to you all. <laughs> <laughs> so for me... Um, well, my journey started uh, actually two years ago when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, that kind of reared its little ugly head this year <laughs> to the point where um, in November, I had um, 12 doctor's appointments back to back to back. Some days it was two doctors at a time. November, I had five, including a surgery. So a total of 17 appointments and surgeries done within um, a month's time frame um, of November and December. Um, it's, it, <sighs> I said I wasn't gonna cry. <laughs> It's just that, um, you know, I, we, uh, I appreciate you. We all appreciate you. You know, the doctors and nurses have become a pe part of people's family, as Lisa had said in the prior, um, the, the, before the break. Um, I can't imagine what it's like to be in their position of trying to protect themselves, their families, and then the community too. Um, I don't wanna cry. You know, you've seen countless videos of them working and helping up their patients because their loved ones can't be there. And so Lisa, when you said that you were able to be there with your, your, your mom, that just made my heart feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside because there are so many people who haven't been able to have that. So you have these doctors and these nurses who are holding up the camp, the phone so that they can, you know, have communication with their loved ones because their loved ones aren't able to be there to hold their hand. You know, they're, they're working um, lots of overtime putting themselves on, <clears throat> putting themselves, putting themselves to be susceptible to, you know, not having the proper um, um, tools, you know, starting out, like what? Okay. 
It's true, though, because they were putting themselves on the line. They were still showing up to work every day, knowing that maybe all of the equipment that they had for themselves and their protection wasn't going to be enough. And yet they still got up and they went to work and they helped us. And they, again, were, you know, worried about their own families. Um, I have a couple of people who ended up, you know, moving out into the RV for a long period of time till they understood the virus and sep- like waved to their families from the RV. Um, that takes a lot and a toll, but so many of them have touched your life. I mean, I can't imagine all that you've gone through and each one at the same time you've touched their lives. So we can't forget that either is that we touch the lives of those around us as well. So you going in and being as positive as you can, even in those terrible times, that's still touching the life of that nurse, of that doctor, right? And having that relationship with them. And sometimes for some of us, we see these people once and that's it, right? And so you're able to just come at it from that standpoint of like gratitude. Yeah, gratitude is very important to me. I I pray for every first um, responder, to all the doctors and nurses. To, I, I, it, it's, it's, my staple every single day to send out these prayer to these frontline workers because i just i just can't imagine being in their shoes and now being faced with the decisions that they're having to be faced with right now of making a decision as to who's going to get care and who's not who wants that responsibility you know but but these are the things that they're they're facing they're tired um they're exhausted now i would say this um, I appreciate the fact that these people who took care of me doing, um, you know, all these appointments, the countless COVID tests that I've had to take in the last couple of months, like I'm surprised I'm even able to breathe right now. <laughs> <laughs> you did so much, <laughs> you know, but you know, how they talk to you, it's, it, it's coming from a place of love and actual care. I feel that even during these times now, even more so than before, that um, it's, it's, that love is there, that care is there. They're, they're sympathetic to what we are going through and um, in the situation just in its entirety. You know what I'm saying? Um, so with that being said, today in every single day, their dedications and their concerns are completely and totally unmatched. Absolutely. And I love it. We couldn't have said it any better ourselves. We definitely want to thank Rich and Donna and Lisa and LaShawn for coming on. We know we couldn't get to every single category of the essential workers today. In an hour, there's no way. So for those of you that we couldn't, you know, call out personally, we want to thank all of you, the frontline workers, the essential workers, the moms and the dads that are having to figure out how to how to homeschool their children and all the other things that we have been doing as a society raise ourselves up, work on that love and light within, send that out, even if it's for a moment, because the universe takes it, receives it, and puts it out tenfold. It's all about that energy exchange. So before we go and we wrap this up, we have a message that Nicole is going to read um, from Shades of Spirit to all of you. So we at Shades of Spirit would like to take a second to thank another special group of people. We would like to thank those that fought a war this year, fought a war against an invisible enemy. This enemy hit our shores nearly a year ago. This invisible enemy instilled fear in all of us. This enemy took our children out of schools, forced us inside, and separated us from our families. What this enemy could not do, however, is break our spirits. Humans still found ways to adapt and to come together using innovation and creativity. This enemy revealed to us that our real heroes are not found in Hollywood or on sports fields, but rather in the emergency rooms, in nursing homes, first responders, and in the men and women that work in grocery stores willing to put their lives at risk to help others every day. This enemy changed the lives of virtually everyone on this planet, changed but did not defeat us. Thank you to each and every one of our listeners who continue to fight this war in whatever ways they can. Bless you all. Have a happy new year, be safe, and may 2021 be the change we need. So from us to you, thank you all so much. Thank you for listening. 
join us again on Monday morning for Shades of Spirit at 8 a.m. Have a happy and safe new year, and we will see you guys later. Thank you all so much.